Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're joining me again. My name is Sasha Reed. Um, today is all about experimenting and finding some fun new solutions to the expensive wink of Stella. Um, if you're new to my channel, please do think about subscribing at the end of the video or whatever you like, actually. Um, I, I will provide a subscribe little button at the end of the video as well as some links to some other videos that I have been filming recently. So today is all about my Wink Estella. As you can see, um, my desk is a mess. I have been playing with everything, so forgive me, this video is probably just going to look untidy. Um, but I wanted to share it with you and I didn't want to pack it all up to make my desk pretty to then share it on a nice background. So <laughs> you're just getting what I've got here. Um, I went through basically everything that could be iridescent or sparkly in my collection and I have tried it all out for you. And I am going to give you a rundown of what each of them does and the idea and the hope would be that you've got something in your stash that can make do. And if not, then I will share with you the things I've used and you can see if you can find them where you are. So, um, the things that I used and that I needed is some of these little containers and I will pop a picture on the screen. This is what I bought. I got them from Amazon for £7.99 and it came with some spatulas and 50 containers. I've ordered a second lot of these as well. Um, they are not watertight, so they will leak if you leave them on their side. When you shake them, they start to leak a bit, but I couldn't be bothered to go and find a whole bunch of different containers that would do the job like these. I just wanted something small so I wasn't wasting loads of product or time. These, I believe, hold 10 mils. I'll put it on the screen, though. Um, so they're just small. And they were very economically efficient. I started out with ones like this, which were from the dollar store in Canada. I think I got 10 or 15 for a dollar. So you can find them around. Um, you just need some low containers. I went to the pound shop in the UK. I went to every shop in the UK and could not find small containers. But these are basically for lip balm which is why you've got the little spatulas that come with them. So the other thing you're going to need is a clean container for water. This is going to be your water that you put in. If you have distilled water, I would recommend using distilled water. I didn't and I don't really care. <laughs> so I'm not intending for this to last forever. Um, if I come back to it in a few months and it's moldy, I'll dump it and make a new one. I'm not really fussed. That's why I went with the little containers over anything big. Um, this stuff here is gum arabic and I will explain that in a minute but I got some of the liquid gum arabic I found it was much easier you can also get the powder gum arabic which looks like this it comes like in crystals or a powder and you mix it with water yourself and make your own gum arabic I ordered this to have a go and then I realized I'm just too lazy and I can't be asked <laughs> So we've got the liquid gum arabic which is more costly, it's more expensive, but you only need a little bit. So this jar will last you a long time. Um, I only recently opened it, but I've had this jar for about three or four years. Um, but I, So it's lasted. I don't know how long it'll last now that I've opened it. Um, you need some of these. Um, any kind of syringe will do, but I got this syringe from Amazon I believe. I got a pack of 10 for about two or three pounds. Um, I like them because if they get too gunked up I can chuck them. They weren't overly expensive but I do try and reuse them and make sure I'm not killing the environment a bit more than I need to. Um, then you need a jar for getting dirty. <laughs> so you're cleaning your paintbrush, um, cleaning out syringes, that kind of stuff that can be sort of infected water essentially. So those are sort of those key things that you need and then have a look through your stash and see what you've got. Today I'm going to be sharing with you, I've already done the swatches, I've already made them up, you can see, but I'm going to make a couple with you just to show you how I made it and walk you through it. Um, I have got, um, let's start, with what you've got in your cupboard, you might have some eyeshadows. So these are from the Dollar Store um, or the Dollar Tree in Canada. I saw lots of American ladies using these to make wing castellas and things, so I bought some of these. Um, and I have got some paint. So I've just got these two paints. They are acrylic paints. Um, I'm hoping all this is in the shot. I'm really sorry if I go out of screen. I just want to film this and I still can't see what I'm filming. So we're just going to hope for the best. Um, but I've got these two acrylic paints in gold and silver. 
Um, then I have got uh, some ink. This is like drawing ink. I picked these up from the works here in the UK for about £2.50 and I picked them up over a year ago so don't get excited. <laughs> you probably won't find them but they are called drawing inks um, and they are just an iridescent kind of ink. Okay. I have also got um, let's do Perfect Pearls. A lot of you will probably have Perfect Pearls. I grabbed the Perfect Pearls in the white and the gold, so I've done them with these. Then I have got these inks. These are again our um, liquid ink, and these I got through Stampin' Up. I can't find them any other way, uh, so that's the only way I found these. Um, and they are very small and very expensive. I think they're around eight pounds and you don't get much. So these are very in, in, uh, economically efficient, uneconomically efficient, whatever. <laughs> these are expensive. <laughs> so they're not the best solution. There are better, cheaper ones. Um, then I have got the Windsor and Newton. I have got the gold ink, which how fun is this? It's really cool. And I've got the iridescent medium. So it's not an ink, it's a medium. Okay, I've got these two as well. Then I have got my Arteza uh, mica powders. So I'm gonna, I don't know if I can show you on the screen. I don't know if you're going to see it all. I can't, I don't want to knock anything over. But I've got this giant box of 60 mica powder colors. Um, and it looks like that. And these are loads of fun. Um, it comes with a little information thing, but I will do a bit, of, a bit of a better sort of tutorial with these mica powders. I'm going to show you how to make um, shimmer paste um, in a couple different ways. And um, obviously there's this, using it to make uh, Wink Estella. So I've got this bundle from Arteza. Um, so I've used these Arteza mica powders. Now I have used more than what I'm showing you here. I've used a few different golds and a few different silvers and I'll show you those when I get round to it. Um, and then the last thing that you kind of need, which I was forgetting about, um, is paint brushes for doing your swatches and testing them out. I use this Arteza 4-0 liner um, one and just this random number eight one. I just use these on my swatches if you wanted to know what they were. Um, and I used it because it's quite fine and quite thin like a Wink of Stella brush would be. Um, and some kind of rag. So I kept all the muslins from when I had babies. They never used them. <laughs> they never puked and I had all these muslins so I kept them in my craft room. And I used them like you wouldn't believe. But this is great for drying up your brushes in between. Uh, for wiping your surface. I just keep them to hand and then I chuck them all in the wash. Um, and then just keep reusing them. So that's what I use instead of paper towels. Um, and then some bits of paper to kind of do your swatches. And then um, I will be showing you now how I sort of made these little labels on the tops. Okay, so we're going to start by making a couple um, of these and I'm going to show you how to make the winner and, and then I'm going to show you how to make sort of a coloured one as well. Um, now, the only reason I'm using these two here, to be honest, is because I've been making so many of these I've gone through all 50 jars. <laughs> So I don't have any clean ones um, or any ones that are free. I've ordered my second lot, but obviously uh, they don't come on same day delivery. <laughs> um, I have these two and I thought actually if I use the bit slightly bigger ones, you can see what I'm doing a bit better is my hope. <laughs> Right, before I get started, because I've kind of changed my direction now, I'm going to show you my swatches of all the ones I've done so you can see. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to make the best one and the colored one. Okay, so this is my swatch board. On the top here is Wink of Stella. And then I've kind of gone through them all and swatched them all out for you. This is going to be difficult to see. I will take pictures of this and post this at the end of the video so you can see up close um, 
sections of what each one looks like just because I can't see what I'm filming and so it's really difficult to show you. So here we have the Wink of Stella and my favorite most closest replica of it was using the Winsor and Newton Windsor and Newton gold and iridescent and mixing them together to get a sort of champagne color which is what the clear Wink of Stella is sort of like it's like a um kind of a champagne color so this is my best one that I loved the most which was very similar and on projects it looks really really similar as well so this is the Windsor Newton and it's about three quarters of the iridescent and a quarter of the gold with, with also using water and your gum arabic and I haven't explained why you need the gum arabic yet um, basically I did loads of research and read lots about it and it's um it's basically a sort of sticky substance so that when you put your um, projects together if you if you look it up it's used a lot in watercolor it helps to it helps to stick your color to your paper so it basically acts like an adhesive in a sense um, it kind of keeps that glitter from rubbing off too much whereas if you just stick it on with just water it'll probably dust off and flake off. This kind of adds that sort of adhesion is what I'm looking for. There we go. So almost everything here has had the gum Arabic in it, um, with the exception of the um, Perfect Pearls from uh, Ranger. They don't have any in it because from what I read and from what I have learned about them, they already have that kind of substance in them so I kind of think they might already have some gum arabic in them so I've not added gum arabic into them so this was my favorite one which was using these two then we have um, anything with an A was where I used Arteza so that was Arteza's crystal white then we have pure gold light gold and sage glow which is quite fun because if you look at it on there it's pink and if you look at it on the black it's green which is crazy and then we have this champagne so there's the Arteza champagne is like that um, and then we've got like the other some other colors here um, I will obviously do these pictures close up so you can see and I will show you how to make one up using it as well so you'll see what I'm doing um, and then we've got the drawing ink which kind of went like that that's the gold those are my cheap ones from um, the works that was those two and then I did the I have no idea how to say them Tusky Tusky no <laughs> it's the same people that make the embossing ink it was these ones here um, the champagne mist and the frost white look really good they're really close to Wink of Stella as well um, and then we've got Perfect Pearls, White and Gold, which were those two here. Um, I've done there at the bottom. And again, they're quite glittery and shimmery, but not as glittery as the inks are. Then moving on, this is my second swatch. I could have kept going. I could have done so many more. If you can see, some of these I accidentally... Um, put the wrong color in the wrong place because I wrote first. So we've got the Wink of Style at the top. I dropped my board while it was wet, hence the marks. Um, this is the paint. The paint was really hard to mix as well. The paint was so difficult to mix together um, at first, but then it kind of got a bit of a texture, but then it was still had little tiny chunks in it. So it wasn't ideal, but it is workable. Um, this is the eyeshadow, the cheap eyeshadow. It really, really did not want to mix. Um, I don't recommend using eyeshadow. You can do it if you've got it. You have to really work with it a lot more. Um, the other downside to it is that um, it seems to settle instantly. So when you've got it in your container, you just have to keep stirring it and stirring it and stirring it. So it's this one here. You can see it just settles to the bottom but it settles to the bottom continuously. So when you stick your brush in, you have to stir and lift it out at the same time or it just all settles to the bottom. It's really not ideal, but it does work. You just have to work harder and I'm a bit lazy, so I don't like it as much. Um, then I went and used the rose pink um, and the turquoise, which are these two from Arteza. They mix 
beautifully. They mix really smooth, really clear, really easy. The mica powder, I don't know if all mica powder is the same, but the Arteza mica powder just mixed instantly with the water. It was really smooth transition. Um, and you just didn't, you didn't need to do much work with it, which was really nice. Um, and then we've got the Windsor and Newton. I used the gold plus the pink. So I used these two on that one and got this kind of cool, um, almost ombre effect in a way. It's quite neat. And then this is just the plain Windsor Newton gold and the plain Windsor Newton iridescent. Now I wish I'd done these first up here to kind of share it with you um, but I mean that's the wink of Stella there on the top and that's the Winsor Newton one so they're very like really good and obviously when you mix the two together you get this beautiful result there so that's kind of my little chart the worst one I found again was the eyeshadow really difficult to mix um, and you have to continuously mix when you get it on your paper because it settles so quickly. So these are my least favorite. My second least favorite was using paint, but it still kind of works. Um, the best ones though, again, are these two and the Arteza mica powders. Now again, I've not tried other mica powders, but they are very good. Um, the second runners up are these inks um, and the Perfect Pearls. So those are my top ones. Now we're gonna make some. I hope you're not getting bored. I want this to be an information packed video. So I, I'm doing it with a lot of talking just so that you've got a bit more knowledge just because I've tried to do some research. I could be completely wrong and forgive me if I'm giving you wrong information, but this works for me and this is a massive money saver. I mean, granted, yes, I have spent quite a bit on this, but I'm hoping that I've spent it and you don't have to. So I've used my YouTube earnings from last month to sort of pay for all these little things that I've needed to do this tutorial. Um, and then I hope that it benefits you so you're not having to spend all the money um, that I've had to do. So I will link everything below. Um, some of this stuff is from Amazon and some is from Arteza. And I'll try and link everything I can. Obviously I can't link the stuff like the, from the dollar store and things like that. Um, but I'll link what I can and I'm going to share with you how I kind of made all this. Now these two are different. This is an ink and this is the medium. Um, you don't need loads. I have made a lot of this stuff already and there's still loads left in my bottles so I'm really excited because they will last a long time. But I wanted something that was more of a champagne color and I found if you mix these two you get that color. Now how long it'll last when you've mixed it I don't know. But this is mine here that I've made and it settles. You can see it settles quite quick on the bottom. But you just have to shake it up or in my case that's a bad idea because it starts to leak out the side. But you could just use your paintbrush and mix it. I have a chopstick and I mix it with chopstick as well. Um, and I have no idea how long it'll last but this in here, one of these is I think about double what you're going to get in a Wink of Stella. This is, I think, 10 mils. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's 5 mils. And in one of these, all you get is about that much filled. And there's a little ball in there as well. So there is not much in these pens. So this will last you a long, long time. So you can see this is my mix of these two colors. And it's just gorgeous. <laughs> it's really pretty. So what I did was you want to use a clean... Um, squidgy <laughs> and what I found was I would use you have to shake this when you get this one you've got to shake it for probably a good three to five minutes it really really settles on the bottom and what you want to do is you want to shake it until you can see that moving so you can't really see it moving right now but now can you see how it's like you can see that they're is movement you can see the stuff moving around that means you've mixed it all it really does get stuck on there so I shake it open it and I don't know if you can see all that amazing color shifting around it settles quite quick so you're gonna grab some and it's quite difficult because I don't know what size container you've got I'm gonna just make a very small portion of it up because I've already got some made up 
just give my little uh, syringe a squidgy in the water. Um, and then you gonna shake this one. I hope my camera's catching all this or I'm gonna be really sad if I have to film it again. And then this one I just pour in. It's a lot easier to pour, it's a bit thicker. Um, and I'm gonna pour in about three times the amount of this as I did the gold. So I'm sorry I don't have exact measurements, but I feel like it's kind of pointless because if you've got a container that size versus one this size, your measurements are obviously going to be different. But you're going to go for about a quarter of this one and three quarters of this one. Okay? Then you're going to add some water in. And I usually go with about one and a half times the amount of water of the product I've stuck in. So, for example, if I stuck in one millimeter, one millimeter, <laughs> one milliliter of product, then I would stick in two and a half of water is basically what I've been doing. Um, because you, you get a lot of glitter and a lot of shine and you kind of want it a bit more runny because you want it to kind of glide over your um, project and you want it to be translucent. Then I'm going to take some of the gum Arabic and you don't need much when I put in for these ones I put about four to five drops in each one of these small little ones if that gives you a good idea so I'm just going to give it about six or seven because it's quite a bit bigger but you don't need much now I've got my little spatula I'm going to use that end because it's easier I'm just going to mix it all up and it's just kind of a trial and error if you find it's not translucent enough then I add more water but you really don't need much so you can see this is about two to three times the amount so far that I have in this container that I would have in one of these little ones. So you really, really don't need much. I find also when you mix in the iridescent medium and the gum arabic with the gold, the gold doesn't settle as fast. But if you look at the gold here, it's already completely settled and completely separated. So I find when you mix the two, that is also a plus side. So I think just by the feel while I'm stirring this that it is quite thick. So I will probably add some more water um, to thin it out. But if I get a bit of cardstock here and I take my paintbrush. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, give it a little swirl before I put it on. And there's my Wink of Stella. And I really like it. You get this really gorgeous shimmer and shine. So I think it works really, really well. And you can obviously keep adding more if you want more um, shine and less of the gold. Just keep adding more of the iridescent medium. If it's too thick, add a bit more water. Um, it's quite simple to make, but that's roughly what I use is a quarter of one, three quarters of the other, and you get a very similar look to the um, Wink of Stella. Here's my Wink of Stella. It's a brand new one I opened this morning. And that's what that looks like next to that. I think it's quite similar and quite close. Mine is a little bit more gold, but again, you can add in more of the iridescent white if you want. So that is how I make my Wink of Stella. And it works brilliantly, and this will have cost pennies. So my iridescent medium was $6.99 for this whole bottle and this was $5.75 for this whole bottle. Now this is the 30 mils, you can get half of that as well. I think this one only comes in the 75 mils but I'm not sure. Um, but these were great. So for about 11-12 pounds I have got enough of that to make probably about 500 Winka Stellars or more. So you get quite a lot. The other idea that you could use is you could put it into a bottle and do some shimmer mist. Now in my last video, I did mention that I have tried loads in tons of my um, watercolor brush pens. Now I'm sorry I forgot to mention this at the beginning. I have wasted a ton of my watercolor brush pens. There is obviously something really special that Wink of Stella does with the barrel of their pen, but I cannot get any of the glitter, no matter what I've used, and I've tried them all in one of these pens, it will not go through the tip of the pen. It just gets clogged and becomes a big mess and is a complete waste, which is why I've got these little jars 
and a paintbrush. Okay, so you could try, but I'm fairly certain you're probably going to waste it. I've ordered some new watercolor brush pens from um, AliExpress, and I'm going to try them because they looked like they had, um, they didn't have this sort of part here, which is where all the glitter is getting stuck. It looks like it just goes from the barrel straight to the brush. So I'm going to try those when they arrive, but again, they're coming from China, so it could take forever. Um, but that is why I've got them in jars and not in the watercolor brush pens because I find that the glitter just gets stuck. It doesn't come out. Okay, so that is the top formula. I'm going to share with you using some of my Arteza powders. So with the Arteza mica powders, they are very pigmented. Again, you don't need much. They come with a little spoon in the box, but I've lost the spoon because that's what I do. Um, so I'm just going to tip some in there. And we're going to make up a colored one. There are hundreds of colors to choose. Well, 60. <laughs> I can't say hundreds. There are 60 in the box. Um, you can get two different sets of these. You can either get the 60 pack, which has 60 different colors. And they are, what are they? They're five grams in each one. Or you can get the next size up, which I believe is 10 grams possibly. And you get, I think, 35 or 40 of them in the box. So there's two different options. I went with this one because I wanted to see what all the colors were like. If I bought it again, I might go with the smaller color selection because I don't really need that many different colors of blue. <laughs> They're, they are different, but I don't need that many shades. So what I've done with the Arteza powders, now I've done the same as what I'm gonna show you now as that I've done with the um, metallic. So there's several in this box of different shades of gold, different shades of white, different shades of cream, and they're all very shimmery and shiny. Some of them look a bit more glittery than others. So some are like a lot more sparkly than the other ones, but they all give a really nice shimmer and shine. So instead of buying colored Wink Stellas, I thought I would use my Arteza Mica powders and do my own colors. So when you open them, they've got the little protective seal. I just pull that off and save it to the side and put it back on before I took um, put it back in the box. Um, now I would use my spoon, <laughs> but I haven't got my spoon, so I'm just gonna tip a bit in there. And again, I'm not gonna make this full jar up because I don't need a blue one this huge. So I'm gonna try and keep it small, but it is hard for me to gauge how much I need, which is why I like those little ones. Um, okay, so I've just tipped some of the blue in there, and I'm hoping that you can see all of this uh, fairly easily. I'm going to then take some water and I'm going to add in probably a good couple squidges to it because it is quite pigmented. And then I am going to add in about four or five drops of my gum arabic and just mix it up. It is that simple. So I'm going to give it a little mix and a little swirl. It mixes beautifully and really well. If you've got eyeshadow at home, have a go with your eyeshadow, you'll see what I mean. The eyeshadow just does not want to blend, it does not want to mix, you really have to force it and then it keeps setting and setting and setting, or settling to the bottom. Um, the mica powder does settle to the bottom, but it's a lot easier to swish around again. So you can see that swirling in there, it looks gorgeous, it really is amazing. I'm gonna take another bit of cardstock here I'm going to take my paintbrush, make sure it's nice and clean, and I'm just going to swirl it around in there before I put it on my paper. And then you've got some colored Wink Estella. I don't know what the actual colored Wink Estella is like because I don't have any. I couldn't justify the price. But this is sort of an easy way to make colored Wink Estella, and it's still very translucent as well. But it is so pretty. The mica powder works really, really nicely with that. Um, the other thing you can do, and I've got one here already pre-made, which I forgot to share with you as well. So this one here is ink refill. So I've taken my Stampin' Up! ink refill Island Indigo and I've added it with my mica powder. You could do the same. You could use an ink refill and some of the iridescent one as well. And I have stuck them together. The only downside with this is that you get really deep color. Um, and I did use quite a bit, foolishly, of my ink refill. But I mixed it with water. And I put a little bit of gum arabic in there. 
but this is much darker, much more pigmented than the other option. So if you've got some clear mica powder, if you've got um, the iridescent medium, then you can add some ink refill to it. And I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm really happy. I hope you can see it and you're catching the light. I'll try and take pictures of this and put it at the end or I'll add them in if it's really blurry because the camera's not focusing. But that is my DIY Wink of Stella tutorial. Any questions, any comments, put them down below, please, and I will do my best to answer them. I'm not an artist. I'm not a scientist. I have no idea how long any of this will last, but I'm really happy with the results, and it's way, way, way cheaper than buying all the colored glitter pens, and you can basically make whatever color you want, um, and it's just so much more cost-effective. Yes, I did spend a decent amount of money just sort of working all this out but actually to be honest it wasn't it wasn't tons because once I had these two and my gum arabic I didn't really need much else and the rest of the stuff I've kind of pulled from my craft room and pulled from my house so the top ones again these two and the Arteza mica powders are my favorites you can also use and get away with fairly easily your um, perfect pearls and these kind of inks, they work well as well. Have a play, mix them, have fun with them, and you know, feel free to share what you make. I have got a Facebook group called Creating with Sasha on Facebook. I'll put the link down below as well. Pop over there, share what you've made with yours. I hope this tutorial was um, informative. I hope you got lots out of it, and I'm sorry it was long, but I really wanted to pack in all the information I've learned in the process. Um, so thank you very much for joining me. Please do subscribe um, and please do share my channel with anyone who would like to know how to make these kinds of things. Thank you. Bye.